Good evening and welcome to Metro Focus. I'm Jenna Flanagan. More New Yorkers than ever are homeless and the statistics are sobering. There has been a 74% increase in the number of people living in shelters in the last 10 years. And just last week, New York's Coalition for the Homeless reported that that population is on track to grow by 5,000 more by the year 2022. Tragically, more than 20,000 of those in homeless shelters are children. Women in Need, or WIN, is the largest provider of shelter for homeless families in New York City, serving close to 10,000. Last week, the group called on City Comptroller Scott Stringer to audit the Prevention Assistance and Temporary Housing Intake Center, also known as PATH. As part of our Chasing the Dream initiative on poverty and opportunity in America, we examine what's causing this homeless epidemic and how can we solve it. I'm joined by Christine Quinn, former city council speaker and current president and CEO of WIN. Welcome back to the program. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So first of all, I just want to go back and have give people sort of a refresher on the purpose of the organization. What is it that WIN does? What is the service that you guys are providing? So WIN is the largest provider of shelter to homeless families, women and children mm -hmm. mostly, 92% of our households headed by women, but the largest provider of shelter and permanent supportive housing to homeless families in New York City. Every night we house 10% of all the families that are in the shelter system. Now, why is it that we've seen such a uh, increase in the number of homeless families in the city? Well, there's a number of reasons. The biggest, I believe, or one of the biggest, is the affordability crisis in New York. Okay. Rents are, I mean, not to quote somebody else, but too damn high. And so the door out of shelter is not as wide as it should be or it once was. Um, also, we're finding just beyond rents, landlords don't want to take the government vouchers that people have. A real, although it's against the law, discriminatory. Yeah, I was going to say, isn't that illegal? It is. It is. But when you're preying on people who are experiencing homelessness, mm. they're at a low in their life. Maybe they're lowest. They don't feel empowered. They've been let down by the system. So this idea that they're going to turn the landlord in is really a, a lot to ask. So mm -hmm. there's not as much prosecution there as there should be. So the affordability crisis, the lack of uh, rents that somebody coming out of shelter, you know, ca uh, uh, can afford. Um, the second reason that you're seeing it go up is domestic violence. And that's a kind of a different part of the equation, mm -hmm. but that's still a very high driver. Um, also, and this relates to the affordability, evictions. Although, and I w want to give Mayor de Blasio a lot of credit, they've done a good job preventing evictions and protecting illegal evictions with one-shot grants and whatnot. But it's still one of the top two reasons people come into shelter is because they lose the home that they're in. So that's a, a, another another factor very much. Well, one of the things that I wanted to ask you about was the public's misperception yes. about the homeless. Because so often when we hear about perhaps a homeless shelter being built in more residential area, people flip out, for lack of a better description. What is it that people are misunderstanding? Well, you know, first let me say with the misunderstanding, and then I want to talk about the flip out. Because we recently did a poll that showed the vocal minority is mm -hmm. simply that. Um, so we did a poll recently with a pollster firm, Harris X, and we wanted to look at, as the biggest providers, what do people know? What do they think? Now, the fact is that 70% of the people in shelter in New York City, 70% of the people who put their head on a pillow in a homeless shelter last night mm -hmm. are families with children. 25% mm -hmm. are children six years of age or younger. On average, you stay in shelter about 15 months. So if you're six, we're basically talking about a quarter of your life yeah. in shelter. Now, our poll showed that most New Yorkers believe, the vast majority of New Yorkers, that the majority of homeless are single men. Now, why do they think that? That's who you see on the street. Mm -hmm. It's against the law to have your child on the street. You don't see that. Two. Parts of the media, and I would highlight the New York Post, have for decades, whenever there's a story about homelessness, found the scariest, most frightening, disheveled picture of a man, usually a man of color, and put it on the cover to scare us, mm -hmm. to create us and them. 
and they've done it very successfully. So that's something we really need to work on is getting the facts out there. Because if the facts aren't out there, the public cannot demand the right policy responses. Now, we see sometimes when shelters are proposed or being built that there'll be a, a response from the community. And it's often negative. Yes. And we've seen the city at times back down from sites because of that. This poll we conducted showed that 90% of New Yorkers thought more needed to be done to help the homeless. And six out of 10, 60% were okay with a shelter in their neighborhood. So six out of 10 had no objection. There's been a lot of reporting about the city's efforts to rotate families in and out of some hotels, motels, et cetera, and how that is and is not working. The motels and the hotels are a disaster. Mm -hmm. So what happens there? Our shelters have 24-hour securities, security cameras everywhere but in the rooms. Mm -hmm. We saw a woman just a mere three years ago get murdered in Staten Island, a domestic violence survivor, homeless because of domestic violence, in a hotel in Staten Island. He finds her, he kills her, no security. So they're without security. They're without comprehensive programming. They don't have the type of social workers, case workers, job training, recreation, after school help, camp, which we have in, uh, that exists in shelter in the hotels. You just wait in the hotels and languish with no one really to help you. So those are only uh, result in extending homelessness. Mm -hmm. And if people move out of them, they haven't worked through the trauma of homelessness and their experiences, so they'll undoubtedly come back around yeah, I was and again. say it end up back. Right. So then what would you say is the best way for New Yorkers who are hearing this and perhaps weren't aware of when want to do something positive for the homeless? What would you suggest? Well, there's a couple things. They should reach out to WIN, and our website is winnyc.org. And um, one, reach out to WIN, or and if you see a shelter provider in your neighborhood, there's a lot of fabulous groups out there. Reach out to WIN, reach out to another group. Use your voice. Mm -hmm. If you're seeing stories about people protesting shelters or you're seeing media coverage that is classist or racist or sexist, tweet about it. Go up on social media about it. Put a post on Facebook. You know, tweet at the publication that ran it. Tweet at the neighborhood group. Mm -hmm. You know, we need people to raise their voices because too often in the homeless debate, the only voices we hear are the ones screaming. We need to hear those voices of compassion and community, and that really will make a difference. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you, and I'll give viewers one other idea. You know, sure, we're coming yes. up on the summer. And children at Wynn uh, go to camp all summer. We do a STEAM-based camp at our, our shelter. But other shelters do summer programming, too. Mm -hmm. So send in $10. Send in $20, to, and then when you're at taking your child to camp on the first day, remember, you also helped a homeless child go to camp. I think that's a beautiful thought for the summer coming up. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. If you and your family are in danger of becoming homeless in the tri-state area, please visit our website at metrofocus.org to learn more about organizations like WIN.